Good evening, guys. Happy Thirsty Thursday. I'm so used to saying Wine Wednesday, but it's a Thursday, which is super fun. And I'm really excited. I am going to be joined by Ken and Akiko Freeman of Freeman Winery and Vineyard. Vineyard and Winery, I said it the wrong way. So I am going to invite them to join me and share the screen, and you're going to get to know this amazing couple and taste their beautiful Sonoma wines with me, hopefully. Good evening, Ken and Akiko. Oh, oh my God, that was the smoothest. Hello. Hi. Hi, Emily. How are you? You know what? I'm glad we did that practice run because this was like the smoothest one I've had so far. <laughs> good. Good evening. Happy Thursday. How are you guys? Very good. Pretty Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah? Well, I'm super excited. I have all of the wines in front of me. I'm going to admit I did have a sip of the Chardonnay. I just like this. I was smelling it and I just felt like I needed to, you know, get the palate warmed up. Great. So, well, why don't we start? I'd love to sort of introduce you guys to the viewers. You know, not everybody might not know who you guys are. So I'd love if we can sort of walk down a bit of the history of Freeman. And I personally love um, the romantic story as well. So maybe you can weave in <laughs> lovebirds and, and then we can talk about the winery and go from there. Sounds great. You want to start? Yeah, go ahead. Great. Well, first of all, we, we want to uh, just welcome everybody and uh, hope everybody is safe and healthy. You know, clearly a crazy time out there. Um, you know, we're hanging uh, as best we can out here in Sonoma. We've kept uh, the team employed and we're keeping busy. And uh, But thank everybody for spending time learning uh, for our, our fans, learning about Freeman and Emily for introduce, introducing us to uh, you know, all of your fans. So thank you. Of course. Yeah. Really fun. This is sort of like my way to get to share all the wineries that I'm obsessed with, with all of my followers. And a lot of my friends and family have been tuning in regularly. So whether they like it or not, they're going to be very educated wine people by the end of Shelter in Place. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, as you uh, mentioned, this is a, uh, it's a story of a, a long romance. Akiko and I have been together for, uh, boy, almost 35 years. So uh, we met uh, in college uh, a long time ago and uh, a shared passion for food and wine and um, we ended up in this amazing place out in uh, West Sonoma in the Russian River Sonoma coast and uh, you know we never thought Akiko was going to be the winemaker but uh, this is truly a family you know little operation where we kind of grow our own grapes Akiko makes the wine and um, hopefully everybody enjoys them this evening. Well, I know I enjoy them. I still remember, uh, you guys are probably tired of this, but I remember when I met Akiko two years ago at the Farallon Pinot Day. And I, I, of course, you know, when it comes to school, I don't remember dates or important stuff, but when it comes to wine, I can tell you which winemaker I met when. And it was like, I felt like my eyes had just been, you know, opened. I was like, these wines are so beautiful and elegant and um, not trying to be sexist, but I also love it when I fall in love with a wine made by a woman. I think it's just really cool. So, um, yeah, so that, that's when I met you guys about two, two and a half years ago. Right, yeah. So tell us about the winery. So I know you started in the early 2000s and originally you were, you know, more of a Pinot Noir house and now you're making Pinot and Chardonnay and we're actually going to be tasting both tonight. Right. Yeah, Kiko and I, um, you know, we're fortunate. We had lived in Asia for five years as expats. And we came back to San Francisco in uh, the late 90s. And uh, we had a, a passion for wine. And we got introduced to wines in the Russian River, Sonoma Coast area. And uh, it's about an hour from the Golden Gate Bridge. And, um, we, you know, we had a vision. We wanted to, uh, you know, build a business in Japan. Um, Akiko, his family is in Japan. And, um, and so lo and behold, we uh, looked around in 2001. Uh, and we found a little small rundown winery. Um, it's it was, not run down anymore. I visited. It is beautiful. Well, thank you. Uh, everybody said we're crazy. Another, uh, you know, crazy couple getting into the wine, which is notoriously a crazy, tough business. But we were passionate about it. And uh, so we bought this little winery. And then we ended up making 600 cases of wine in, uh, in 02. Okay. And um, we released it in 04. And lo and behold, um, Pinot Noir Sideways came out. And all of a sudden, everybody started drinking Pinot. So the timing was very auspicious. Oh, that, I didn't realize it was the same year. That's amazing. Um, and so speaking of Japan, I think it's pretty incredible that Akiko's 23rd generation from Tokyo. Right, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right. 
bit yeah. history. It is, yeah. And I'm probably the first female working outside of the house. In your family? In my family, yeah. Well, thank God you're technically not working outside of the house. Like it's right, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, that's amazing. So we have a lot of fans here. I mean, I've been sort of reading the comments. You guys, thank you so much for all your comments. If you wanna ask a very important question, mm -hmm we have a really big turnout. I would love it if you could just put it in the little question section. I'll keep an eye on them and I will weave them into the conversation. Right. Um, we've got a lot of people from Chicago. I saw someone from Michigan. I mean, these are obviously my best friends. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Chicago, so I like to pretend everybody from the Midwest knows me. But right. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, but yeah, maybe we, maybe we should kick off with a little Chardonnay. It is 507. It, we've earned it, right? Love it. Yeah. Okay, so which one would you like to start with? So we're going to start with the Hawk Hill. Okay, that's what I think. And uh, Sonoma Coast. So just to, to set the, uh, the scene here, we're located 10 miles from the Pacific Ocean. That's where our winery is. Um, and so we're in the Russian River area. Um, and uh, we're going to be tasting Russian River wines after the Sonoma Coast wines. But um, the Sonoma Coast wines are located about five miles from the ocean due west. And as you go west, it gets higher. We're at 400 feet elevation here. And uh, the Sonoma Coast wines are about 1,000 to 1,200 feet. So what we're going to be tasting is our Hawk Hill Chardonnay. Um, this is a vineyard in the Sonoma Coast located uh, about four miles from the Pacific Ocean. It's about 1,100 feet elevation. Okay. It barely ripens. So this is uh, growing grapes right on the edge. As a matter of fact, Schramsberg. Uh, they're Jay Schramm. This is where oh. most of it comes from. So it goes into Chardonnay, into Champagne grapes that basically have a lot of acidity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this area was so cold in 1940s. It's a little history. Uh, people planted Zinfandel oh. in that hill and nothing ripened. So every day people had to make wine vinegar from that. So the whole hillside was called Vinegar Hill at one point. Wow. In the 1990s, people realized, oh, maybe Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, which strikes the cool climate, might do better. Yeah. So they replanted that, and now we have a beautiful fruit from that. And it's lovely. Yeah, I've never, mm -hmm. I've never heard of Zinfandel by the Sonoma Coast, so I guess right, yeah, learned, and now it doesn't happen anymore, right? Um, yeah, well, should we, you know, sip, smell a little bit and share with everybody what we're smelling? Hopefully a lot of you guys... I'd love if you guys can comment. Let us know who um, has tasted along with us. It's always fun when you get to, you know, order the wines in advance. And don't fret if you didn't order the wines. Um, you are still able to get the set after, and you can sort of do this at home on your own. Um, Ken and Akiko have put together an amazing little package. They're selling it online, and you're getting almost like a $300 value for about $200. Is that right, Ken? Right. Mm -hmm. So they're basically giving away their wine. I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> rough. Right. Yeah. This one has really kind of nice lemony flavors, very kind of higher acidity. So it goes great with food. It's about, I think it's 12.8% alcohol. So, you know, right when we got going, the other thing we did a little differently is we made more of a food friendly style of wine starting in 02. And that meant lower alcohol, less oak. And at the time, the bigger the wine you made, the more oak, the more alcohol, that's where you'd get the bigger score from the wine spectator or Robert Parker. Yeah. But we instead, you know, we went the opposite direction. We wanted to go food friendly, lighter, more elegant wines. Now the pendulum's kind of swung. So yeah. everybody's kind of enjoying exactly. these type of wines. Um, yeah, no, it's lovely. And I smell a little bit of like rock on it, you know, and- um... mm -hmm. Yeah, especially it's has a lot of minerality in here. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to try making kind of shabri style wine with California fruit. And I think we came very close to that. Now, are you using um, stainless, like what's the fermentation here? Oak, neutral, stainless? Yeah, we use French oak, but all the oak we use is uh, neutral. So it's an older oak. So yeah. it doesn't have much oak flavor in here. It's all beautiful fruit. Yeah, it's really nice. It's such a lovely expression. I feel like I want, I just want a little scallop or something with it right now. Oh yeah, that would be great. I have a little cheese plate. I've become, the problem with these Instagram lives is every time I feel like I need a cheese plate. So I'm like eating way more cheese than I should be. <laughs> so delicious. And, um, 
Yeah, so I've got a little cheese plate, all my goodies on the side. So if I take a little nibble, that's why. Great. Oh, we've got someone from New Jersey. So let us know, guys. Oh my gosh, New Jersey, originally from Michigan. Love it. Awesome. Um, and um, I'm curious, you guys, who is tasting with us? Um, oh, yes, that's a great tip. Best Shavy. Um, your beautiful guest house, I don't know if this is public, but he's suggesting that you mention that guest house, which is available to rent at the winery, which I've stayed at, and it's spectacular. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we renovated uh, a next door house. It's a um, three bedroom, three bath. And uh, as Emily mentioned, it's right in the middle of the vineyard and apple orchard. And um, yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah, it's really great. I went with like four girlfriends last summer and that's when I first visited the winery. And right. Yeah, that should be an annual summer trip. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I'm, nobody's really telling us if they're tasting with us. You guys, come on. Don't be shy. I want to know. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. We do have a comment from Jay Barcoos Design. Yes, it is. It is an, an, an unusually special type. He says it's not a usual Chardonnay. It's kind of acidic, but that's exactly how you guys wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree. There's, it's like lean and I mean, there's so many overpowering big California Chardonnays, which you know, those of us that love Chardonnay, I don't think that's the style that we actually love. Yeah, and when you're growing on the Sonoma Coast at 1,200 feet, four miles from the ocean, the, the grapes barely ripen. So we get a lot of fog, cool weather. And, but what it does do is it brings this great acidity to the wine. Yeah, and the acidity is very important. Um, like, I feel like this is going to age very well, wouldn't you say? I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so you guys, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the question section. Everybody's waving us. You guys are very popular. You have a lot of people. <laughs> um, okay, well, do you think we should move on to the Green Valley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to be Vanna White and show the bottle. And how do you say the name of this vineyard? Diofu. It's not a name of the vineyard. It's a brand of three different vineyards, but Diofu is a Japanese word for cool wind, cool breeze. Cool winds, okay, well that makes sense. So the Green Valley is one of the cooler sections of the Russian River, is that correct? Correct, so now we're coming uh, about five miles inland from Hawk Hill, and we've gone from 1,200 feet or 1,000 feet down to uh, four or 500 feet. Okay. Where these vineyards are. So as you get lower, it gets a little bit warmer. So it should taste a little bit more fruit forward, a little less acidity, um, but also the same kind of little hint of oak. So we're using uh, all French barrels. We use five different French uh, coopers, different barrel makers oh, wow. coming from different forests in France, but they're mostly, they're all actually older barrels. So we reuse them uh, up to you know nine years old. So most of the barrels are five, six, seven years old. So we just like a little hint of oak. Mm, yeah, these are extremely different styles. I love them both for such different reasons. This, I literally want to have a glass of, or a, a lobster with it, which reminds <laughs> me. Absolutely. I, this is a great pairing for an lobster roll. Or crab. Um, <laughs> I started a master class last night with the battery hosted, and one of my wine coaches and mentors, Christoph, led it, and he wanted me to tell mm. you hello. He loves you. Oh, Christoph is gay. <laughs> We were talking this afternoon and I was like, I've got to go get ready for my Freeman Instagram. Line. He's like, no. <laughs> he doesn't have Instagram because I told him to join us, but um, he was suggesting lobster with one of the Chardonnays we had right. last had like a little bit of richness like this. And gosh, mm -hmm. I want to go to the fish store if they're open. <laughs> yeah, this one has a slight like a tropical fruit in mm -hmm. there. Mango, papaya, and that's slightly richer than the first Chardonnay. Yeah, a little apricot. Right, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so they're both made basically the similar style, right? So exactly, old yeah. barrel. Mm -hmm. yep. so the total difference here is the great location and, you know, exactly. right Terroir. Yeah. Terroir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys, I, I don't know if you guys are all, you know, like to geek out as much as I do, but Basically, what we're saying is these are greats, you know, what did you say, Ken? Five miles apart, approximately? Five miles apart, 600-foot elevation difference. Made with the exact same winemaking style, mm -hmm. 
very similar barrels, but they're just totally night and day, which I think yeah. is so extraordinary. And they're both so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So Good, and then pairing, can I just ask you guys what you typically like pair at home with these? Cause I'm sure you drink these wines a lot. Scallops are fantastic. Yeah, um, and lobster with real food. And a whole kill, the first one goes great with kind of sushi, um, you know, caviar, whatever. Yeah. Caviar. Oh, we should do that next time. Yeah. I, I did a fun Instagram live with my friends at the caviar company, and you can't go wrong Ooh. with caviar and wine and champagne. Mm -hmm. so Good, I, and then, and then well, real I, food too oh, also emily this was yeah. the wine that was served at the white house oh my god i was literally ordered. about to mention that oh good which uh you know kind of uh, spurred our business in japan which has kind of taken off and it represents about 20 percent of our production goes to japan so you know hats off to akiko that she's kind of turned into a little wine celebrity there and uh having this uh wine served at the last obama state dinner with prime minister abe of japan really got a lot of press in japan well, so speaking of Akiko, the celebrity over there, I know that you just <laughs> did um, a virtual Zoom tasting with Wines of California, and you did it with a bunch of over 600 Japanese sommeliers. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tried to watch it, and it's just really hard to watch something when you don't understand the language. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but it but, was a fun project for me, yeah. yeah. And is there like a different flavor profile? I mean, obviously, if the Japanese are loving your wines, they we like similar wines, but do they lean towards one style of the Chardonnay versus the other? Um, no, they like both Chardonnays, and but um, real food just because of the it was served at the White House. Yeah, taken out and uh, taken off in Japan. Yeah, well, I mean, we we all loved our former president, right? So you can't. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Oh my God, you guys, I'm literally trying to keep up with these comments. You have friends in San Diego, Steve Kress, neighbors saying hello. New Jersey loves Freeman, <laughs> fell in love. Oh yeah, I was hosted by Nick too. Mm -hmm. He visited three years ago. We oh. people from Boca Raton. Oh my God, you guys, I feel like this is like a reality TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully everybody's gonna come back and visit us. So open right. invite and yeah. you know, we're gonna be back open here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So. Awesome. Yeah, I think you guys will be seeing me sooner than later. I might just sneak out of San Francisco and hope nobody notices. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people here. It's, Sonoma's nice, but it's getting lonely. So. It's getting what? Lonely. lonely. <laughs> Oh, I know. Well, so yeah, so that's a good question. So when you guys open, um, you know, do wineries have like a plan or everybody's still sort of working out how it's going to work? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a bunch of um, initiatives coming from um, the, the governor and also from the wine industry in terms of best practices um, when we do reopen. And fortunately, for those of those, those um, watching who visit us, you can see we have a very intimate experience anyway. And we're only open by appointment and we only have a few groups a day that come by. So we're kind of well situated um, for this kind of individual and, and uh, distancing. Yeah. And people are asking if you're open for tastings. When you open, I assume you will be open for tastings? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we have outdoor areas and separate picnic tables. And we only handle uh, one group at a time in our cave. Yeah. So a lot of distancing involved. Yeah, when I went to the cave, um, Nick hosted me, and Akiko, you were there. Ken, you were there too. I mean, I saw you all. Um, and it was a very beautiful experience, and we got to we tried a lot of wine, and we had a lot of fun. So yeah, it's that's one of the things you guys that I think is really important to understand. Um, you know, those of you that didn't know about Freeman wine, that is perfectly fine. Now you're in the know. You're a cool kid. Um, but <laughs> the wineries that I love to showcase are the small family own wineries you know they're not owned by a corporation there's an amazing story behind them um and you know right now especially during these challenging times it's really important to support family-owned businesses if you can so that's one of the and you guys were at pinots and plaid last year those that don't know um i had a pinot noir event with 25 of my favorite northern california pinot noir producers it was going to be in October this fall, and with our current climate, it will not be happening in October. I'm hoping for early Q1 of 2021. Freeman will be there again, and you know, it's, it's, it's gonna come together. So as soon as we can have more than 50 people in a room, 
I'll be putting a date on the calendar. <laughs> Can't wait. It was a great time last year. Um, somebody's curious, is Rio Fu a play on words? Rio Fu. It's actually a Japanese translation for a cool breeze. So yeah. it's uh, indicative of, you know, every day um, the fog comes in at four or five o'clock and it cools down to 50, 60 degrees in the evening. The morning, the fog blows off about 10 a.m. in the morning and we get up to 70, 80 degrees. And so the cool wind uh, really makes a difference for growing these very tasty grapes. Um, and uh, it's that temperature change. That we call it diagonal shift in temperature. Yep. It builds the phenolics of the grapes. And that's why these, <clears throat> these wines are so flavorful. Yep. Yeah, you guys, it's really funny. When you go to wine country, everybody like packs. Oh, I'm going to Napa or Sonoma. I'm going to wear a sundress. And then come six or seven, <laughs> the sun sets. And it is, you want a jean jacket, a scarf. Um, it, it, it's, it's funny. Whenever I drive up there, I pack like enough for like a five-day trip because I have so many layers. And of course, I want a different mm -hmm. every visit. <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Well, should we move on to the reds? So, I mean, I'm loving it. Great idea. Hmm. Emily, can we show you just a brief map? Oh, yes, please do so. So this is uh, our Yuki estate. And so now we're, gonna, we're going back to the Sonoma Coast. So we, uh, Yuki is located three miles from the Pacific Ocean. It's a thousand foot elevation. Uh, we planted this vineyard. We bought a 50 acre ranch in 2006. And we planted 14 acres there in 2007. Wow. And all these different areas here are different clones. So each clone has a, they're all Pinot Noir, but each clone has a different profile, thickness of the, of the skin, size of the grape, different nose, different mid palate, different finish. And so yeah. each one of these clones, we, we pick separately and we ferment separately and match each clone to one of five French barrel makers. Oh, oh wow. Each clone has a French barrel friend? That is so cool. I've never heard of that. So can I put you on the spot? Which clone, like, what are the five clones? Uh, so we have um, clone number 114, okay. uh, 667, 23, 2A, 8, 2A, Carrera, and Mount Eden. Actually, seven clones. Seven ah. clones, five different barrel makers. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, if you want to sound really cool when you go to a wine tasting, just ask like, oh, what clone is in that? Um, I actually <laughs> was waiting for you to say like martini or six, six. Did you say six, six, seven? I can't remember. Yeah, okay. I did. Yeah. Um, I, I sometimes feel like I like the martini maybe just because it sort of has my name in it. But <laughs> I also tends to have a lot of spice and attitude, that clone. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been told I have a little spice too, so... <laughs> Well, good. So are we going to start with the Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir? Yeah, let's do the Yuki. Yes, with the Yuki. Do you want to show the bottle? Yes, I will. So this is named after our nephew in Tokyo, Yuki. And uh, Yuki is the 24th generation in uh, Kiko's family. He's uh, 14 years old now. Oh, wow. He loves coming out to the vineyard, running around, looking at the bobcats and the turkeys, and <laughs> hopefully no deer in the vineyard. We have a fence to keep them out, but mountain lions out there. And He's going to have to come and do a summer internship in the vineyard, in the winery. I know, soon. Yeah. Yeah, I was just having a conversation last night. Um, I did this with William Selling, and Jeff was talking about, you know, mm -hmm. like, what's going to happen with visas for interns with the current conditions and right. I was volunteering my time to come up so if you guys need an extra set of hands but yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> we're looking at hiring uh, sommeliers who are now out of work oh that's so a great idea harvest, yeah. most mm -hmm. talented uh wine interns in the valley exactly right okay mm. And cheating, I have my tasting notes in front of me. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, the Yuki Vineyard, since it's so close to the Pacific Ocean, I always smell kind of like an ocean breeze, little salty thing in there. Um, nice kind of earth in this wine and dark berries, like blackberries. And I always feel this has like a um, seaweed broth, like a Japanese 
dashi yeah. soup kind of umami in this wine. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I smell and I definitely, it smells like very earthy. I haven't smelled the Russian River yet. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, Russian River is going to be a little warmer. Warmer, I bet that's going to be a little right. bit fruit forward, dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm cooking with soy sauce, this is my go-to wine. That you okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I have this weird thing. I love salty foods and I love soy sauce. So that is really good to know. So mm -hmm. when I decide to open this, I'm going to have to make like a chicken teriyaki or something. With oh, sauce. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then this vineyard is, uh, is so close to the ocean and it's uh, exposed. It's extreme. We get one to two tons uh, per acre of grapes out there. And that same vineyard, even at Gloria, you know, five miles inland, that same vineyard will get two to three tons. Wow. And then if it was closer, like in Napa, uh, it would probably get, you know, four to five tons. So it's just windy, cold, extreme. And so you get very small little berries. Yeah. Uh, but you get these great flavors. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because as I've, you know, studied and learned more about wine, like, you know, the smaller berries have the more like condensed, rich flavors. So in some cases, I mean, I guess if every single vineyard was that type of production, you'd have to own a lot more vineyards to make. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Good thing we are kind of two different areas, Russian River and Sonoma Coast. And yeah. Yeah. So do you guys, I mean, I know at the moment you have your two Chardonnays and your two Pinots from those areas. Do you see yourselves ever adding another area? I think we're pretty focused. Yep. Uh, you know, you can taste the differences of these two amazing areas, the terroir. So uh, we do do a total of, uh, is it eight bottlings we do? Six? Uh, six Pinot Noir. Two and two Chardonnay. Chardonnay. So we, we do eight bottlings oh, from those two areas, cool. and each one's distinctive. And for a small winery, you know, Kiko and, and team is making a total of 5,000, maximum 6,000 cases of wine. Mm -hmm. So we just love our neighborhood here, and uh, yeah. we get enough diversity. Well, it, it's like, if it's working. It's perfect. So why change it up? <laughs> um, so it's fun. So I'm looking at the two next to each other color wise. And um, it looks like I mean, obviously, the Sonoma Coast is a little bit more translucent, I feel like versus the Russian River. Mm -hmm. um, just in terms of hard to see. Yeah. So the Russian River is here. Um, what do you guys think at home? Who else is tasting? Oh, this Rio Fu is delicious. Jay Barkis Design is saying. Mm. Yes. Um, Vinita Martha says, longtime lover is looking forward to hoping you guys opening soon. Me too. Mm. Um, yeah. So you guys, those of you that drink Freeman regularly, I'm assuming there's a lot of you because you join. What is your go-to? Like, you know, what is your weeknight wine versus your special <laughs> celebration wine? Um, or do you just drink it all all the time? <laughs> Well, you know, of our, you know, six Pinots, one has Akiko's name on it. And so that's uh, the Akiko's Cuvée. Uh, and that's kind of the best of the vintage. Well, I'll let Akiko tell about it. But that's, if we're having a special occasion, that would be the one. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, whenever I'm cooking with soy sauce, Yuki is my go-to. Yeah. So even if it's fish, you know, teriyaki or whatever, I just gravitated to that Sonoma Coast wine. And what is the difference in the Yuki Kuve? The Akikos. Kiko, sorry, I'm mixing up all these great names. The Akikos. Yeah, so, <laughs> so Akikos Kuve is my barrel selection from the special, like each vintage. Okay. So, um, each year we harvest from different vineyards and different section of the vineyards. So each crones pick separately mm -hmm. and each clones are fermented separately and we put them in uh, oak barrels separately and within the same um clone some of them goes to a different barrels okay. and after aging each one tastes different so we usually ended up like 150 to 200 different barrels of uh 60 gallon barrels of pinot noir and myself and my production team go around and taste each in single one and rate them and pick like a 15 to 20 barrels of the best tasting ones okay. and make cuvee out of it. So it's trying to... The, yeah, the most... Of the vintage. I, 
notes and it's obvious when I'm writing because I'm like, mm. like I have this really <laughs> bad habit when I, I used to, my friends would make fun of me in school when I'd be writing notes. I like, so when I stop <laughs> smiling, that means I'm taking notes on what you're saying. Right, yeah. You can't turn it off. It's fun to hear a winemaker describe the wines and the winemaking style. Right. Yeah. So um, each year, the vineyards that goes into a Kiko's Cuvée is slightly different because mm -hmm. we just try to make the best of the year. Yeah. Like that. Um, well, we have some people that are sharing more. So mm -hmm. Vin Vinita Mature says Gloria for special occasions. Keep oh. mm -hmm. And Callaway Cox says we had a magnum of a Kiko Cuvée for Thanksgiving and it was absolutely special. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Um, How fun. I miss any others. Uh, hope long, long, longing life. Gloria here, six Texans, six feet apart, two Chicago transplants. Yes, we love you. All right. <laughs> That's really fun. I hope people got together with friends to, to watch this. and Because, I mean, what a perfect occasion. Buy four wines, have a couple friends, and you can open them all together. Yeah. Six feet apart, obviously. <laughs> um, cool. Um, oh, see, going back to that point, someone says, I don't think my wife and I can drink all of the four bottles, but we'll try. Um, <laughs> what is the best way to store overnight if they've opened them? Uh, put it in a fridge that saves it better, even Keep if it's a red wine. Um, well, so what I'm going to suggest that's not going to help today, but um, in the future, guys, really just invest in a Coravin. Oh. Uh, they're like two or three hundred dollars. And if you're drinking wines as beautiful as this, that way you could just, you know, pour a glass of this tonight, a glass of that. Um, mm -hmm. And this is what it looks like. Like, you know, I just have a little, I poured, I don't know, two or three ounces. And it leaves like a little bit of a hole in the bottle. And it's beautiful because then I would not open all four of these and waste them because there's no way I can finish these tonight. <laughs> Ken, you're quiet over there. What's going on? I'm enjoying this wine, just savoring it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. Um, well, is it Russian River time? What do you guys think? Oh, moving on to Green Valley? We can always revisit the Sonoma Coast. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, uh, let's show you Gloria. So this is uh, the Gloria Vineyard, and uh, this is our winery. Uh, down here. Gloria is uh, nine acres. It's five different clones. Here and again, we're 10 miles from the ocean and uh, it's 400 foot elevation. So each of these uh, clones, it's Swan and Calera, um, 667, 777, and Martini are all picked separately. Oh, we have Martini! We do have we some do, Martini. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and, um, you know, Gloria is uh, named after the hurricane where Kiko and I met. Oh, well, that's very romantic. I don't like the sound of the hurricane, but you guys meeting, here's the beautiful bottle. So tell us the story, how you guys met. It sounds like it's going to be, well, I've heard it, but somebody else maybe. <laughs> yeah, I um, had gotten out of college. And I worked in Martha's Vineyard in the summertime. That was the summer job. I actually worked for a, a lady by the name of Lillian Hillman, who is a famous playwright, and I was the, uh, the houseboy. So I would uh, mow the lawn and get the newspaper and make cocktails. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of her friends uh, at the end of the summer in September said, I'm sailing a boat down to my home in Florida. Do you want to be on the crew? And uh, no job prospects. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. So we started sailing and uh, we got past Block Island and Nantucket and into Long Island Sound and we got a hurricane warning. So it was Hurricane Gloria. Oh. And uh, that was the big hurricane before Sandy that was supposed to be a direct hit on New York City. So clearly you can't sail during a hurricane. So we tied the boat up in Largemont, New York. And I grew up in Westchester County. And uh, what do you do during a hurricane? I don't know, drink wine. Drink. It's like shelter in place. What do we do? Drink wine and eat cheese. <laughs> exactly. So uh, my, my childhood friend was having a party in his basement, a keg party. And uh, lo and behold, I went and? Um, I was an exchange student from Japan I finished high school and I went to all girls Catholic school from kindergarten to high school. And there was a sister school that's a Sacred Heart school in Westchester, New York. And the school's name is Manhattan Dale Cottage. And my parents thought it was a good idea for me to go for a year and learn English. And of course, from the name of the school, Manhattan Dale, I thought I was going to Manhattan, New uh, York. I would have thought so too. <laughs> 
Before the internet. <laughs> right. It was way before the internet. And the cab took me there, and I realized it's not in Manhattan. <laughs> Where? It's an, an hour north of it. It's a West. Purchase. Purchase, purchase New York. Oh. Well, there's the train. Yeah. Yeah. But I, when I got there, I saw deer running through campus. And I, <laughs> this is not exactly <laughs> where I started going. <laughs> Yeah, but school started and I checked into a dormitory and start living with a bunch of girls and three weeks into school, a huge hurricane and came and hit New York and a school lost power, class canceled. So I was just sitting around in a dormitory with a bunch of girls and my roommate said, hey, do you want to come to a cake party? My boyfriend threw it and I had no idea what it was. Yeah, but, uh, my first party in New York, so I dressed up to kill, put on my cocktail dress and updo and high heels and all dressed up and show up and totally stood out. Well, <laughs> but you still spotted me in, so. in our friend's basement, right next to a keg. So uh, she uh, definitely uh, caught my eye. And uh, the rest, you know, of and you, the rest is history. And when you come out to visit us, that's the keystone of our cave, the date we met, September 28th. Oh, wow. Very, I love all these sentimental romantic milestones. <laughs> <laughs> and coincidentally, when we started a winery, there was an apple orchard next door, and it was owned by an old lady named Gloria. And oh. she sold the apple orchard to us. Now it's a Gloria vineyard. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So there's a big connection with the Gloria. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like we need to be playing that song, Gloria, Gloria. You know, I know, I know. That, that should be, if we do another one of these, at some point we'll have like Akiko come out and we'll have the music going. <laughs> That's a really fun, you know, pump you up song. <laughs> okay, well, I haven't tried this yet. Oh yeah. yeah. I pre-poured. Um, oh yeah, it smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the descriptor. The 2017 Pinot is plump, racy, and forward. <laughs> yeah, I do love a nice, plump, you know, juicy Pinot Noir. I am not a lean Pinot Noir girl. I mean, I love Sonoma Coast, but your Sonoma Coast are not too lean. But, you know, like a Pinot that's so light in color. You're mm -hmm. like, I think you, you know, should have left the skins on a little longer or something. <laughs> Yeah, this one has a little more body to it. And when I compare Yuki and Gloria, um, I said, it's, do you like Bridget Baudo or do you like Audrey Hepburn? <laughs> you know, it's both beautiful, but in a different way. This one's a little more body to it. Little yes, I feel like it'd be really great with, um, I mean, on its own, it's beautiful, but I sort of would love to pair it with like a burger. Mm. Burger be great, yeah. duck is a yeah. great combination. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, more kind of traditional Russian river characteristics, a little warmer, a little lower elevation, but again, with the Kiko's light touch to it. So this is not one of your overpowering uh, wines. Yeah, no, it's great. I'm trying to compare the noses. Mm -hmm. When I go back to the Sonoma Coast, I'm getting sort of, you know, like floral aromatics on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how just, you know, 10 minutes later, you notice something you didn't notice in the beginning. Yeah, that's the fun part of the tasting wine. It's keep changing in your glass. Yeah. So we've got some feed. Whoa, this one. Great. Yum. Love this one. Love this one. Wow. Um, wow. Oh, somebody wants to know about my ear. Oh, my ear. I'm, I'm guessing they're my earrings because Akiko, I don't see big obnoxious earrings on you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, these are from J. Crew. Great costume jewelry. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, Very pretty. viewers happy. You know, I feel like if you have just like a simple top, it's fun to have a little exciting earrings, <laughs> especially yeah, from, great. from your waist up. Right. Yeah. Um, we actually have a little uh, a little sample of what the vineyard looks like, what Gloria ooh, looks like right now. Let's see, Gloria. Right now, this is. Can you see the little flowering? Yeah, they're very green. Yeah, and has a little 
So they're starting, you know, grapes are self-pollinating, but they still flower. And so that's what you're getting, uh, the little edges there, those little brown edges. Mm -hmm. So it's just really starting. I yeah. just learned, I, I know that Sonoma has been wanting rain for the past couple months. And so I was talking to a winery the other day and I was like, it, it rained in San Francisco, did you get rain? Aren't you thrilled? And they're like, no, because it's flowering and you don't want it to rain during flowering. I had no idea. Can you tell us? <laughs> oh. Yeah, May, May rains are generally not good. Uh, you know, with the fire challenges we've had here, we love as much water as we can get, but hopefully not in May. Mm -hmm. There's a two or three week period where these clusters flower and if it rains the clusters get knocked off they don't form so we're going to be losing part of our the yield part of the production of the vineyard based on how much it rains uh-oh so god yeah, so, um we had a, not good not good yeah three days of rain uh it's sounds finally coming up but we uh, about five percent of flowering so, so we're okay, still, still so, early. Yeah, but it might have lost a little bit. And then, so speaking of um, flowering and harvest, how is the 2019 vintage, well, 2020, I'm like losing, how, how are things looking? Uh, so far, so good, but I could tell these flowers gonna form grapes, we don't know for sure. Okay. They were looking great until a week ago in the rain. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Rain. So keeping our fingers crossed. And okay, so no rain, guys. New update. We do not want rain. <laughs> yeah, but also, Emily, this is a little different than France, that we live in this kind of Mediterranean climate here, and we don't get great year and terrible year. Pretty consistent that mm -hmm. each year we're kind of in the, you know, very good to excellent category. So even uh, we got rain in 15, so we had a very low harvest, so we were down 40%, but the quality was extremely high. And that's really what we care about at the end of the day. Okay. Um, and um, shoot, what was my question? I thought I just had a good one. Oh, I know, harvest. Um, Akiko, what, at what point can you explain to people when you harvest Chardonnay versus when you har harvest Pinot Noir grapes? Because I assume they're different times. Yeah, so um, everywhere else, white wines usually come first, but our idea is so cold so we pick Pinot first, okay. and Chardonnay comes later. That surprised everybody, yeah. how it works in our area. Yeah, Chardonnay takes a little longer to ripen. So like, is it like late August, the Pinot, and maybe September for Chardonnay? Uh, no, like we pick uh, Pinot Noir in the beginning part of September. Okay. And Chardonnay comes um, late September to sometime beginning of October. Yeah. Yeah, the latest we ever had was a 2005 vintage that we picked Chardonnay in November 5th. Oh my God. That was the latest ever. Wow. But, yeah. The Russian River Chardonnay you're picking that late, not just the Sonoma Coast. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Wow. Yeah, our vineyards uh, are organically farmed. It's all done by hand. Um, each vine is touched by a human, you know, four to six times during the year. So it's very hand intensive, Yeah. the farming. Well, you can you can taste it because they just taste so beautiful and delicate and um, yeah, I love them. Oh, we've got some good questions. Um, speaking of different vintages, um, one of our viewers, Barb Fallon, wants to know what are your favorite vintages for Chardonnay and Pinots? And don't say you don't have a favorite. Everybody always has a favorite. Hi, Barb. Thank you so much for all the support. <laughs> um, well, I tend to like. Um, odd ears for oh. Pinot Noir. Okay, that's that's a cool fact. Yeah, I don't know why, but I tend to like odd years. So yeah, 2013, 15, 17. Do you uh, have a favorite? I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm writing that down because I'm that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna haunt you in like five years. I'm gonna be like, remember Akiko that odd <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> How about for Chardonnay? Uh, for Chardonnay, hmm, I'm really liking 2017 right now. Yeah. Um, but 16 was good too, so it's hard to pick. The, yeah. You know, it's like picking your you favorite child. Side by side that often. I mean, how often do you have like the 15, the 16, the 17 open next to each other? Right, yeah. And back to the consistency. I mean, we just live in an area that you know, it's an amazing place to grow grapes. And our job is just minimalist winemaking and don't mess it up. But, 
you know, each year we're getting something really wonderful to work with. Yeah. What about you, Ken? What are your favorites? Well, I had the 15, you know, I mentioned it was a really uh, light year from a tonnage standpoint, but, you know, very concentrated, um, you know, great year for us. Um, I like 11. So 11 was really interesting. Mm -hmm. oh, 11 yeah. was, uh, the critics really panned 11. Uh, it was a very cool year. We had almost no sun in the summer. And so, you know, Napa was primarily Cabernet. They need heat and it just didn't ripen. And so, um, you know, the Napa vintages were very challenged. They got very poor uh, reviews and they kind of, you know, painted the brush of, you know, everywhere in Sonoma also had issues like that. But in fact, you know, we um, made delightful wines, a lot of acidity, um, you know, but a lot of complexity and we love our 11s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I can't. I mean, Napa Valley, they definitely need that heat for the cab and the soft blonde stuff, but Meanwhile, Pinot and Chardonnay is happy in the cool climate. Right, yeah. Um, so we have a couple more followers commenting. Phil mm -hmm. Dunphy says, hello from Kevin Hikes, Kellogg 92. Oh, Kellogg, I didn't All know. All right, go Cats. Um, Ken, I think I forgot you went to Kellogg. Um, you grew up right down the street, Emily. You did? You did. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm from Winneka. I was like, I thought you were from <laughs> Westchester. Um, yeah, I had wanted to go to Kellogg. I didn't get in, I, so I went to Fordham instead, which was great, but Kellogg, <laughs> people had way more fun than I did. <laughs> um, anyway, he says, great to have followed your success for the years. Congratulations. Well, that's sweet. Thank you. Yeah. It's sort of fun. Just, I was saying to someone, this is almost like a, like, you know, uh, a wedding or like homecoming. You know, we're reading <laughs> these people that we haven't talked to or seen in a while, and it's a, it's a fun excuse to get together and drink beautiful right. wines. It's great to share it. And again, thank everybody for taking the time to, to yeah. uh, catch up. So I just want to mention one thing, which I've actually pivoted. I've been doing these Instagram lives. Gosh, I think I'm on like, we're on day 64 of shelter in place. And this might be maybe my eighth or my ninth. And I realized that there was something missing. And I was drinking amazing wine and hanging out with amazing people. But I didn't really, I wasn't doing anything to help those that are in need right now. So after further reflection, um, those of you guys that know Jose Andres with World Central Kitchen, I volunteered with him and his team and actually Tyler Florence in September during the 2019 fires. And um, I decided that I should be, you know, helping raise money for those of us that that can't, you know, ha that don't have food. Mm -hmm. So um, I will be sharing a little link on my Insta story after thanking Ken and Akiko for their time and also giving you guys a link. So if you, you know, you want to throw 10 or $20 in, my fundraising goal is very low. It's only two thousand dollars. I'm I'm a super good fundraiser, so I need need that goal. Um, and I would love all of your guys' help. So you know, save a little money to buy some wine, and save a little money. To <laughs> Great. Right. And I also want to thank everybody that supported our offer last month, and uh, we uh, we donated ten percent of the sales, and uh, we donated over ten thousand dollars. Oh my god! And we fed uh, five hundred families in Sonoma need. So thank everybody for their support. Right, yeah. So we're trying to do our, our little part. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's amazing. I didn't realize that. So kudos. So everybody's, everybody's, you know, helping however we can. And um, thank you guys. I mean, don't worry. We still have 10 minutes. We are not wrapping up. But, um, it's really nice. Like, thank you for sharing your Thursday night with us. And um, Ken and Akiko are, are so sweet and so lovely. And little do they know that we're all going to be going to their house and hoping to hang out with them again when we visit them, <laughs> get out of shelter in place. Oh, well, I, I'm torn. Do I go back to the Chardonnay, stick with the Pinot? Oh, we've got someone from Pennsylvania. Mm. So can you tell us some fun stories? Because I feel like there's a lot of good harvest stories that, you know, might not leave the cellar. Any funny stories to share? We have anybody fall in a tank or... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That might be me if I come up with this phone yeah. <laughs> uh, My mentor, uh, the uh, original winemaker who taught me how to make wine, uh, he fell in the fermentation tank in 2003. Oh my gosh, what happened <laughs> fell in? Yeah, we pulled him out. <laughs> yeah, um, and then because it gets so hot, so it's like it gets sanitized, it's no big deal. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's interesting that everybody, you know, makes the I Love Lucy about stomping on grapes in your bare feet. You can't do that. It's illegal to do that in California. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. You can do that in Italy, I think, just not here anymore. But you, you do it in rain boots? Yeah, you can do that. You can sanitize yeah. your boots and step yeah. on it. Okay. But we use stainless steel equipment. We try to be a little bit more uh, safety conscious. Yeah, <laughs> not even any boots are stomping on your grapes. No. No. Nice. Um, good. Well, what else, what else should we talk about? Or we can wrap up. I mean, whatever you guys want. I don't want to keep you. No, no we're no. fine. Yeah. This is, this is great. Ask more questions. Whatever okay. We... So why don't we talk about, so I know you guys are total foodies. Um, what are some of your favorite local Sonoma restaurants that, you know, support and probably where can people find Freeman and Sonoma? Well, we're located, uh, right outside Sebastopol. And fortunately we got lots of friends and we have great little restaurants in town and, you know, everybody from uh, Handline, you know, uh, Natalie is fantastic. She grew up on a farm here and uh, they turned to foster freeze into, uh, into uh, kind of a modern, uh, um, how would you say, kind of upscale fast food. Yeah, um, it's kind of everything handmade, like they do a great fish taco, ceviche, and they even make the tortilla themselves oh great i'm gonna have to add that to my list when i come up great spot great beautiful spot. outdoor area in the back um, we like KL bistro mm -hmm. our friends karen and lucas and they used to cook at jardinaire and hay street in san francisco and they've got a great kind of french bistro right in sebastopol which mm -hmm. is wonderful hey K and L, that's a good one gosh yeah. i need to spend more time in sebastopol because i don't know these ones um, and we have a great ramen place called Ramen Gaijin. I have been there. I know I'm, uh -huh. not, I'm not bad in the dark. I know one of the spots, right? <laughs> good. And then you've got Hana, our good friend, uh, Ken, uh, the owner of Hana Sushi, oh, also I, Pabu. I, oh, my God. Ken has invited me up because I always see Ken in the city because he's also with Pabu Sushi, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that Hawk Hill Vineyard Shard would be killer with his sushi, right? It would be, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. They do carry that, that wine at the restaurant. Yeah. 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 He's a wonderful guy. Oh, yeah. fun. I love it. We actually, uh, we took uh, Ken and his wife, uh, Emmy, to Nantucket last year for the wine festival. And oh. uh, their comment was, because he has a restaurant in Boston. Okay. In Millennium Towers. And uh, his comment was, what's a Nantucket? And I'm like, just come with us. You guys are going to love it. And so we met him at the airport. You come in in a little plane from, from Boston. And they're like, we didn't know this was an island. We had to take yeah. this little plane. <laughs> what are we doing here? And then we took them into town and literally, you know, three hours later, like, this is the greatest place. We want to open a restaurant here. <laughs> we want to come back every year. So that's funny you say that. Do you guys pour Freeman and Nantucket food and wine or you just attended as guests? We do. We We've do, got a yeah. nice business with a lot of the restaurants yeah. there. In Nantucket. Well, maybe I, I, I've been hearing about Nantucket food and wine and, you know, I do Pebble and World of Pinot and I've been dying to go. So maybe next time when this reopens. Oh, you definitely should. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's a yep. great event. Um, yeah. yeah, no, the East Coast is so fun. I was in New York and I've never been to Nantucket. I did Martha's Vineyard one summer, which was such a blast. And talk mm. about good rolls. Yes. Oh, yeah. Both are great Yo, Oh, gosh. I need to go. Like, I think I'm going to make a lobster roll tomorrow and pair it. <laughs> yeah. You know, also other restaurants, uh, there's a great spot in Bodega Bay called Terrapin Creek. Um, you know, Andrew and his wife, husband and wife team, Michelin one star, phenomenal food. And Terrapin Creek? Terrapin, like the turtle. Terrapin. Okay. Great. Um, and we get another question. Um, yes, you guys, you can still buy this four bottle package. Ken and Akiko are going to extend it for a little bit. So um, those of you that might not have bought ahead of time, don't fret. You can still buy it. And um, yeah, it's great. And then you can either, you know, open them all at once. You live this like we did, or you can, uh, you know, open them slowly and enjoy them. And also, if you want to watch this video, it will be on my YouTube channel in about two to three days. And great. That setting fashionista. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very easy to remember. Um, oh, thank you. The Lazarus family had a blast. They can't wait to come visit soon. Oh, um, great. High yeah. school reunion. That's right. Grew up together. Hey, Andy, how are you guys? Thank you for the support. Yeah. Good. Well, I might revisit. I'm going to go back to the Rio. Am I saying it right? Rio Fu? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, 
It's always fun going back to the Chardonnay after red. So m m most important, what are you guys going to be drinking tonight with dinner? Well, I think we have four wines, so. Uh... <laughs> Kevin have our own party here tonight. Yeah, you will. Um, good. Well, anybody, if anybody has any questions, now's the time because Instagram is going to kick us off in about two minutes. And they're very punctual. They give you an hour and that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I do. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear what people, if they need clarification on anything. Otherwise, definitely visit um, the website, Freeman, and be sure to take advantage of the four pack. One ninety nine, right? Or 200 even? That's right. Yeah. One ninety nine, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. You guys have been so much fun. Thank you for sharing. Your well, Emily, thank you for the time and thank everybody for, uh, for, you know, tuning in and, uh, wish we could see you in person, but hopefully we will, we'll see everybody soon. Soon. All right. Well, um, have a great night and hopefully I'll see you guys in Sonoma sooner, sooner than we think. All right. I'll Thanks see. Emily. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Good night. Sayonara. Adios from San Francisco. <laughs> Oh, wait, I got to get a screen, a picture of us. Oops, I'm so glad I didn't forget. I'm going to hold this bottle, and then I want to get a picture for the YouTube, and then we all just smile. It's really tricky. It's hard to do a one-handed shot. Okay. Smile. Uh, oh, one more. Okay, see? It's, it's, te it's a technical challenge. Um, <laughs> I know, because it's like I can only do it with my right hand, and there's bottles in the way. Okay, one, two, three. Oh no, I gotta put the bottle down. Okay, <laughs> one, two, three. All right, I got it. All right. Okay, good evening. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.